Hello, I'm Grant with Grant's Game Rex. I hope you all had a wonderful holiday season, a great December. Happy New Year to everyone out there. I hope your holiday season was filled with playing a lot of games. I know I played a lot of games with my family. I was actually uh, back with my sisters and my dad for almost two weeks, uh, so I got a lot of chance to play a lot of great games with them. Uh, on another note, a frustrating note, some of you might know that my uh, YouTube channel was deleted by YouTube about two weeks ago and they didn't give me any reason. They, they gave me a vague scams, spams, and deceptive practices. I don't do any of that stuff, so I honestly have no idea why it was deleted and I am currently fighting them and trying to get it back. But I bring that up because I want to say thank you to everybody out there that has tweeted, commented, shared, all of that sort of stuff. The the support from the community has been overwhelming and, and great, and, and I'm just really grateful for all of that. So I'm going to keep trying to get my channel back from YouTube, and I will keep you updated. Um, well, sorry to barge in here, but I have a quick update. After I recorded this video, I got on a plane and flew back from the holidays, and while I was on the plane, YouTube reinstated my channel. Ha <laughs> ha! Yes! So double thank you to everybody out there that liked, shared, commented, and all that sort of stuff to help me get my channel back. It worked. It worked. I love this community. It, the amount of support was incredible, and I can't say thank you enough. I appreciate everybody helping me get my channel back. I got my channel back. Yes! In the meantime, I'm happy to be doing some videos here on Rado's channel. Uh, I do this video every month, my top five games of the month. In the month of December, I played 22 new games, and these are the five best of them. My number five game of December was Diced Veggies from Kids Table Board Gaming. This is a great family weight game, and in fact, it's one I brought home to, for the holiday season. I, I grabbed some different family games to bring back, and this is one I brought because I knew everybody in my family would like it. It's casual, it's fun, but there's still a little bit of strategy to it. In the game, there is a block of dice, and you are cleaving off certain numbers of dice and then using those colors to fulfill recipe cards. And you can't take any dice that are over 10 in pip value, so there's that that you know tension of like, ah, oh, I really want that color, but then if I go for that, I can only get two dice, whereas if I come over here, I can get four dice, and that'll help me fulfill more cards. So what do you want to go for? The table presence looks really good, you know, it's just the big meat cleaver and all the different brightly colored dice look great on the table. Um, there is a version of the game that you can play with even younger kids. The version I play, the one where you, can, you can't take dice that are um, add up to more than 10 in pip value, you know, that works for adults, it works for casual gamers. If you want to play with young kids, just don't uh, have the don't have any math in it. Don't have any adding up the pip values, and then they say it can play as young as six years old. So if you want a casual family game that looks great on the table, Dice Veggies plays in about thirty minutes, and I really I really enjoy it. In number four, I have Jewels of the Emperor Penguin from Prolific Games. This one comes to crowdfunding in January, so if you like the sound of it, check out its campaign launching soon. Um, this is a game that fill, fits into that sort of welcoming game, the gateway game, the family plus game genre. There is a modular board of different tiles, and I like that it's a modular board because the game's always going to feel different. One, you have extra tiles that you don't use in every game, and two, the layout of the tiles is always going to change and make it feel like a new challenge. You are moving your penguins around to different tiles and then gathering gems. There's benefits on each tile, and, and each tile has multiple benefits. There is the arriving bonus, the thing you get for coming to that tile, and then also the thing you get for being on that tile. And if other players have penguins on that tile, they get that secondary bonus as well. So you're constantly getting stuff, you're constantly getting different gems, and then you're turning those gems in for uh, contract cards. You're essentially filling contract cards for points. But the most fun aspect of the game is that you are 
You can create bumping chains with your penguins. Any larger penguin can bump a smaller one. So you can even bump multiple things. I'm gonna activate my four penguin. It's gonna bump my three penguin over here, which is then again to bump my one penguin up to here and I get the benefit of the final spot where my smallest number penguin lands. And so it's fun to create those chains and figure out cool combos to do with your penguins. The other thing that's interesting is you have a pool of dice and those dice um, correspond to the number penguins. If you have a two number dice, you have, uh, if you have a two showing on your dice, you can only move your two penguin with that one. And so it just creates some interesting restrictions where you're like, ah, I really wanted to use my five, but I don't have a five right now. So how am I gonna do something else interesting that benefits me? How am I gonna use my penguins in, in, in the right way to get the gems that I need? Uh, again, it's the one that plays in like 45 minutes. It looks cool on the table. It's got those sort of century big uh, gems in the game. And, uh, and it's one I've played with my family as well during the holiday season. And I think it just works really well as that sort of gateway style strategic game that's still easy enough to teach and play with anyone. Number three is World Wonders from Arcane Wonders. I love polyomino tile laying games, and this is a really good polyomino tile laying game. And there's a lot of games in that genre, but this one stands out for a couple of reasons. One, most of the time, on most turns in the game, you will be buying these polyomino tiles. They're sort of basic polyomino tiles, things that you can see in most games, and then you're putting them onto your own personal board and getting resources and scoring points for surrounding them. But every once in a while, you get these big, chunky world wonders, these wooden pieces that go onto your board and take up a lot of space. You have to sort of qualify to earn them, but they get you points at the end of the game and they take up a bunch of space and they give it some really cool three-dimensional table presence because it's not just, you know, flat polyomino tiles on your board, it's flat top polyomino tiles and then all of a sudden there's a pyramid and then all of a sudden there's a coliseum and I just like the way it looks and I like the way it plays. The other cool thing about it is there are, there's a real tension in the game because you are spending your money to earn, to buy different tiles. Every time you wanna get one of those world wonders, you have to spend all of the rest of your money for the round. It doesn't cost any specific amount. You just have to spend whatever you have left. And so there's tension in that because you're looking around at what other players have and you're like, ooh, they could buy that one too, but I wanna buy that. But I still have five gold left for the round. Do I wanna spend all of that gold to beat them to it? Or do I wanna to try to squeeze one more turn before and, and just hope that they don't buy it so that then I can buy it on my turn? You know, there's that, oh, every time I'm like, oh, I feel antsy, right? I'm like, oh, should I buy it now or should I wait? I really want one more thing. I really want one more turn before I buy that world wonder, but I don't know if it's gonna be there when it gets back around to me. And I just, I think that's a really fun tension in the game. Um, you know, it's a, it's a it's a medium weight game, so if you like medium weight games, it plays in 90 minutes or something like that, so it's not crazy long, which I appreciate, and there's just fun strategy in World Wonders. Hey! My number two is Kinfire Delve Vainglory's Grotto from Incredible Dream. This game took me by surprise in a really good way. A few months ago, Incredible Dream put out a game that got a lot more attention called Kinfire Chronicles Night's Fall, and that game was a big campaign storytelling game. Well, this game, Kinfire Delve, is a small box game set in the same world, but with none of the same mechanisms. This game is a solo or two player only cooperative game where you are fighting bad guys and delving to the bottom of this deck. And it just feels really cool and unique for a small box card and dice game. Um, on your turn, you are choosing one of the bad guys or the uh, events to activate and you are fighting that thing. Your rewards, if you should beat it, just include things like oftentimes you're just getting rid of cards from the deck and you are trying to cycle through the deck faster. 
one of the interesting things of the game is you can play boost cards on anybody else's turn. Uh, if I have decided to try to fight this bad guy, you can play a boost and make my action stronger. But you never get to draw cards in this game unless a bad thing happens to you. When you when you run out of cards in your hand, you are exhausted and a bad thing will happen in the game. And so you want to avoid getting exhausted if you can, but you also have to play cards to help each other finish, uh, you know, beat bad guys. Because if you don't, you're going to be constantly losing and taking penalties all the time. So it's the really interesting tension of how can I help you as much as you need, but not overpay to help you because if I overpay, I'm gonna lose my cards faster and then bad things are gonna happen to both of us. The artwork is really cool in the game too and it is a challenge, you know, this is one of those cooperative games where you're not, it's not just a walk through the park, you're not gonna waltz in and beat it every time. You're probably gonna lose more than you are gonna win, but it makes those wins feel that much more satisfying, that much more, ah, it just feels really cool when you can beat this game. And so I, I love the choices in it. I love the tension. Uh, if you're looking for a small box game for a two player game, Kinfire Delve is great. And my number one game of December was Freelancers from Plaid Hat Games. If you like storytelling games, this is one of the best storytelling games I've ever played. In the game, it's sort of a D&D themed, you know, uh, fantasy themed. You are going on quests. You are trying to accomplish different things along the quest. But it is a game run by an app, and the app drives the story forward, and it has some of the best voice acting you will ever see in a game. This is like one of the funniest experiences I've ever seen in a board game I've ever had because the app, the storytelling, the writing is really funny. The character acting is really funny in the game. You know, there was a moment where uh, in, in I was playing this with my family over the holidays and a moment where something happened and both my sister and my dad were like, oh no! And then I was just laughing at their reaction so much. It has those kinds of memorable moments in it all the time. This is a game in the Crossroads Games line, and I love Forgotten Waters, the game that came before this in this series. Forgotten Waters, I imagine, it was a pirate-themed game, and I think I personally responded a little bit more to that theme than I do to this sort of generic D&D &D theme here. But one of the things I appreciate about this game, Forgotten Waters was really hard to get to the table because a quest, a scenario, could take six or seven hours. In Freelancers, a scenario is more like three to four hours. So it's a lot easier to play in a single session. I feel like I'm gonna get this game to the table more often because of its more manageable um, you know, size of different quests in the game. I think it comes with five different quests, so there's a lot of you know things to explore. And you can certainly go back and play a quest again and make different choices and go to different places. But really, it just comes down to, if you want silly, this is a great silly game. If you want storytelling, this is a great storytelling game. If you want funny, this is a great funny game. I like it for all of those reasons. Those are things I respond to personally, and it's great for all of those. Those are my top five games of December. All of them are great games and all of them feel quite different. These are all good for various different reasons. Um, thank you for checking out this video. Thanks for um, liking Rado's channel. Make sure to subscribe and check out more of Rado's videos. Uh, if you wanna see more from me, you can always check out my TikTok or my Instagram, Grant's Game Rex. Thanks so much, everybody.